Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Jason and Peely Project. I am so, oh my goodness, I am so happy to introduce our next podcast host because she is, she is out. Standing. This woman is just is just full of goodness, full of light, and full of just amazing things to tell you. So, welcome to the stage, Dr. Lindsay Elmore. Welcome, oh, Lindsay. Thank you, Peely. I'm so excited to be here. So excited to have you, folks. Dr. Lindsay Elmore is a pharmacist, natural wellness expert, vegan cook, yogi, podcast host, and business strategy coach that's just that's just the top level that's like the the overview i'm gonna let lindsay dive in to all this goodness that she is so let's start off with pharmacy what made you go into pharmacy Oh my goodness. Okay. So it's kind of a funny story. So I was getting a bachelor's in chemistry Mm -hmm. and I was working in a nano crystallography lab where we were crystallizing proteins. I was working for a NASA astronaut. And so we were crystallizing (laughs) these proteins and then we were trying to determine how protein structures grow differently in zero gravity. So I'm in this lab and I was studying for the MCAT, which is the test that you have to take to get into medical school. And I started taking a review class and I realized I have zero desire to take this test. And I was like, I don't care. I don't want to study. I don't want to do it. I do not want to do it. So I decided that I was going to get a PhD in chemistry because I was getting a bachelor's in chemistry. I was working in a chemistry lab. And so I said, I'm going to get a PhD in chemistry. Well, all of the women who were my peers in this lab said, don't do it. It's not your personality. It's not what, it's not going to motivate you. It's not going to get you where you want to go. So I was like, well, crap, I have no life plan. And one day, one of these women walked into the lab and said, Lindsay, I've been thinking about you. I know exactly what you should do. You should be a pharmacist. And I said, oh, okay. And so <laughs> I, I was living in Alabama. My bachelor's is from the University of Alabama, Birmingham. I was living in Alabama. I applied to two schools in both in California, um, including the number one school of pharmacy in the United States. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to pharmacy school. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) And so I got into the University of California, San Francisco, moved to San Francisco, immediately just said, well, I'm here. I might as well be a leader as well. And so ran for class president, you know, just the whole thing. Um, Loved pharmacy school, loved the people that I met there. But along the way, something happened to me. And that was I tore my ACL, my first time ever skiing. I tore my ACL. And when you tear your ACL, it locks your knee out straight. So you can't quite bend your knee. So every time you walk, you have to hike your hip up because your leg is not bending in Mm -hmm. your natural gait. So one day I was studying and I realized I couldn't sit on both of my sitting bones. And I thought, well, this is weird how I'm all like leaned over to one side. I end up in the chiropractor's office she resets my hips my spine gets back into alignment all the wonderful things and i happened to mention to her that i hadn't slept in a month and i said doc i think i'm gonna die i have not slept overnight in a month and my sleep is disjointed it's it's not i can't sleep and she said you should go to the acupuncturist and from there uh, it shifted my whole perspective you know my mom My mom was a nurse. I was always around allopathic medicine. I was always around surgeons and medications and patient charts and follow-up visits and all of those things. When I went to the acupuncturist, I realized, holy crap, there are like other concepts of what is health, what is wellness. And it sent me down a natural wellness path where I kind of became that wacky pharmacist that knew as much about herbs and supplements as I did about medications. 
that grew further into essential oils, that grew further into yoga and meditation. It just started me on an evolutionary path that got me where I am now. Boom. Oh my goodness. Okay. I, I don't want you to stop talking. I want to hear everything. Let's, let's take that path because it sounds like you have this amazing balance. I mean, obviously, you know the medical field. You're a pharmacist. You know traditional Western medicine. How do you balance that with your Eastern medicine knowledge? My approach has always been to meet people where they are. So you can come to me and one of the things I, I one of the things I love about being a pharmacist is pharmacists are excellent at talking to people. We are a very outgoing bunch. I mean, I remember on the bus rides to, to pharmacy school because it would be the medical students, the nursing students, the pharmacy students, and the dental students. And we were all there together because the, the university I went to was a health sciences only postdoc university. So it was all senior level people. The physicians, their noses are all in their books. They're studying nonstop. You know, the dentists, they have their kits. They're, the nurses were a little bit like the physicians, but they were, you know, really studying more. Instead of about diagnostics, they were studying more about instrumentation and, and patient care. Pharmacists, we're just chatting. We are just talking, <laughs> talking, 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 talking. And so a patient can come into me and you can tell me anything anything under the stars and I just kind of take it in. I take it in and nothing bothers me. And that helps me to ask those really difficult questions that sometimes people don't want to admit to because I don't care what comes out of your mouth, there is no judgment coming out of me. And that has put me in some really special pharmacy practice positions. You know, I worked in in opioid rehab clinics where people are coming in and they're getting their medications and oftentimes pharmacists make people feel really bad when they come in and they pick up those kinds of medications or if they come in asking for clean needles or young girls you know 15 years old coming in asking for the morning after pill great let's figure out what we need to do to take care of you what do we need to do to care for you? And so somebody can come in and say, I am completely ready to go on this total natural wellness journey and I'm willing to do the meditation an hour a day and the yoga five days a week and switch from coffee to green tea. Great, I can take you down that path. You can also come in and say, my diabetes is completely out of control. I'm on six medications. They've just started me on insulin. I'm on four, di I'm on four blood pressure medicines, a, a cholesterol medicine, and my feet are starting to rot because my nervous system is breaking down. Help me doc. And I will sit back and be like, hey, okay, great. It looks like you're drinking about 12 sodas a day. Can we go to 11? Can we start there? So I don't care where people are on their journey, what mistakes people have made in the past what led them to be in my care you're in my care now and that to me is what medicine is and what medicine has lost is if you have HIV HIV I'm still gonna shake your hand you know if you have um, if if you have some something going on in your life that other people have told you this is your fault I'll still hug you you know you're in my care and that to me is very very important you know I am one of a number of women in a very honorable profession of pharmacy and we take our oaths as being pharmacists very seriously and so if if I'm in a position where I can show someone that they are loved and if I can always remember that as a pharmacist the welfare of humanity and the relief of suffering those are the two things that I'm supposed to do most well, I can't do that if I make you feel like crap because of whatever life choices you have made in your life. I will always meet people where they are. And that to me has opened a lot of doors for being able to blend the East versus West together.
I will always meet people where they are. I know you didn't mean this, but I'm like, I'm about to tear up from everything you just said, because it is a rare thing to find somebody that's so in tune with medicine, so in tune with what she knows, and just to have your your mentality of no judgment, absolutely. Because people will come to you, especially since you're in the medical field and tell you and have to explain to you their deep, dark going ons in their bodies. And you're, and just the way you present yourself with no judgment, this is how we're gonna deal with it. This is, you drink 12, for instance, folks, you drink 12 sodas a day. You know, most people would say, stop drinking soda. Just stop. Is that gonna help? No. I love the way you're, you're like. Let's just take it down a notch. So let's let's dive in even deeper into your mentality. It says here you're a health wellness expert. We've we've dived into that a little bit. Vegan coke, coke cook, uh-huh. yogi, podcast host, and business strategy coach. Let's let's jump on one of those. Oh well, I mean any or all of them are, are just, there's amazing passions of mine. Um, I got into vegan cooking also when I was in pharmacy school, I did my first cleanse and it was based on a cleanse by a woman named Kathy Preston. Her book, Quantum Wellness, really helped me to understand more about what we eat and how we relate to that food is very, very important. So back in the day when I was a preteen and a teenager and even into my early 20s, I suffered from bulimia and was in an eating disorder clinic, had been to therapy, had been to all of these things. And it was one of those things where I hadn't taken time to really get over the emotional root cause of what was happening. So the idea of changing my diet in a more positive direction where I didn't use food to abuse myself anymore, but I actually chose to use food as a way to nourish myself and a way to um, fuel myself was a dramatic shift. And because of Kathy's book, Quantum Wellness, you know, it really opened my eyes to a lot that I think people just don't want to see about the environmental impact of food, the the um, cosmic emotional impact of the lives that are taken. Sometimes the lives of animals are taken and it becomes this very wonderful celebratory. It brings families and communities together but that's oftentimes not what we see. And so really just starting to think about those things, concepts that I'd never thought about before in my life, led me to lead my first group of eight friends on a cleanse. And it has since evolved into my food blog and my foodstagram. And so we do the clean slate cleanse. And what I've realized is cooking is not that much different than health. You know, everybody wants to know how do I take better care of myself. And part of the way that you care for yourself is actually crafting a loving relationship with the food that we eat and the food that's in front of us and using food almost as a meditative process. You know, we teach our children to say thanks for the food on the table, but I I think we can take it even a step further. And we can not only give thanks for the food on the table, but the hands that grew it, the water that fell from the sky, the sunshine, the dirt, you know, and it it brought me closer to understanding just how broken our food system is. And it also helped me to understand how, unfortunately, the broken food system plays into the broken healthcare system and the two are in cahoots together. And so it's one of those things where I just say, listen, if you want to take power over your health, if you want to really own your health, it's not about just quit drinking soda. It's about the small things that you're willing to do every day. You know, I mean, before we started recording, you said you're, you're getting up every morning and you're priming, you're inviting the light in, you're opening your heart to gratitude. If everybody who's listening today could spend 30 seconds a day doing that every day for at least, I don't know, three years, 
then we would be making dramatic cosmic shifts, which to me is what we're all here for. We're all here to live this amazing journey that we're blessed to be on. And I think that my myself, you know, my brand reflects me and my brand has gotten so big because I love being a pharmacist. I love being a vegan cook. I love practicing yogi. I love meditation. You know what? I realized that over the course of three and a half years of an entrepreneur of employing five people across the United States, I've made some mistakes that I can probably prevent some people from making. So I started doing business coaching and it always goes back. We have very few operating orders. You know, I'm not one of those people who's like, we got to have everything in place and policies and procedures. But you know, if I just remember what's over my shoulder right here, if I can show up and add value and not add any drama to people's lives, I'm doing pretty good. If I can keep the relief of suffer suffering and human welfare at the forefront of my mind, I'm doing pretty good. And if I can just stay motivated to just keep a few disciplines here and there, but every single day I'm making progress and I'm going forward and I'm helping not only myself, but I'm helping others. Because when I see other people get better and realize that, especially when it comes to health, there's, there's no right choice for what you can do. I could sit here all day and we could debate, do you eat a plant-based diet or a vegan diet or a keto diet or a paleo diet or a this diet, or m maybe you need a FODMAP diet. The fact of it is what we ultimately need is gratitude and presence in our daily life. That we just need gratitude and presence. And so it's not about you know, one of my favorite yoga uh, mentors said to me, how long did it take you to get into this body? Why do you think you're going to get out of it tomorrow? And that has helped me so much when I'm bemoaning like, oh, my, my hamstrings are still tight. And he, I told him, I said, you know, it just doesn't seem to matter how much I practice. My hamstrings are still tight. And he says, oh, just keep doing it every day for the next five years and see where you get. That's what I want to encourage people to do. Don't make it about like, I have to change everything today. What can you do for 30 seconds that makes you better 30 seconds from now than you were 30 seconds ago? Let's do that all day, every day. I just want you to keep on talking. Like normally, <laughs> normally when I'm when I'm in it and I'm with people, I I'm like, okay, let's let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let, what can I what can I give to this conversation? You are giving my audience, my listeners right now, and I know they agree with me. So much information, so much positivity, and just the thought of living your life and coming from a place of gratitude every single morning with all that you do too, and letting people know that it's not it's not these drastic changes like you want to you want to be a runner go run a mile go run a marathon no maybe go take a walk yeah you know i just <laughs> it's it's interesting you would use the example of running a marathon because i just finished reading the compound effect by darren hardy and he awesome gives, book so good listeners if you have not read this book it will it will i am a very slow reader and i i finally just learned to own it i stopped trying to speed read years ago this book only took me about a week and a half to read you know you get 40 pages into it and you're like i must devour this book and it, it darren darren says in this book that he met a secretary and the secretary her colleague was about to run a marathon and she said i could never do that and he responded to her and said you can get yourself to that point and so he started her with maybe it was just a quarter of a mile and you can walk or you can run okay and when you can run that quarter of a mile go an eighth of a mile further so short that you barely even notice it that's what we're after ladies and gentlemen is incremental change that builds and that mounts over 
time. You know, if you have had a dream in your life and it just seems too big for you, you are exactly where you need to be. I remember when I launched, um, I relaunched my website. So I started my website way back in like 2014 with one blog post, everybody. So when you go and look at my website today and you're like, I can never go where Lindsay went, just this year, we took down my very first blog post. It was like 120 words about like, your thyroid may be out of balance. Try these herbs. That was it. I started with one blog post. My business coaching clients, they get so frustrated because they're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. And I will very, very commonly take people back. And if go and Google it now. If you think that I am out of your reach, go and Google the Wayback Machine. And before my website was lindsayelmore.com, it was the Pharmacist Alabama. And Pharmacist was spelled with an F. You can go back to what my website looked like the day that it launched with its one little home page with my photo on it that was like, hey, I'm here to provide integrative medicine solutions. And that was it, you know, <laughs> um, I, I, that was it. And so it, people ask me all the time, you know, now that I have the social media following and I'm an entrepreneur and I make my living at my home, people say, you know, how do I get there? How do I get there every single day? I said, okay, you have to show up for people every single day and you have to add value to their lives. You add value to their lives. You know, some of you listening, you may go, well, I'm not a pharmacist. Well, you know what? Some of you probably own homes and I just moved and I made the choice yet again to rent a house. And I'm like, why did I do that? And we did it because we loved the house and we loved the land and we loved the this. But I know if some of you were talking to me, you're like, Lindsay, you're holding yourself back from long-term wealth. Why are you making these financial decisions? And I'm like, well, in a year, we're hopeful to buy this house and this and that and blah, blah, blah. You guys, the thing that I think is the most special, and right now we're in a moment of powerful transformation where people who look differently are demanding to be heard. Women are demanding to be heard. We are in a... We're in a moment where we have cats tossing crystals <laughs> off of the table. I just got a kitten. Um, and so forgive my little cat, Beatrix Kitto. You can follow Beatrix her. Beatrix Kitto. Love Beatrix it. Kitto, yeah. So, uh, AKA not the puppy. And so <laughs> <laughs> me and my partner, we're both, we're both dog people. But this sweet little kitten just kind of came to us and so we've had her since she she came to visit us for the first time when she was only three weeks old and she was so little bitty and tiny so yeah <laughs> so we've got her now um so what were we talking about we were talking about little things mounting all over things. time and all the things, all the things. and stacking it, Oh, yes. And so stacking the good things on the stacking good things the good and things and growing. And that is how you not only grow your sphere of influence, which is ultimately how you become an entrepreneur. That's how you grow your wealth. It's how you grow your skill set. It's how you grow your savvy. You know, it's how you grow the people that you have meaningful, in depth, life affirming relationships with. It's just add value to people's lives and stay humble you know stay humble i don't care how many social media followers i have like i'm still here and still to this day i answer every single message myself on instagram i had to give it up on facebook because facebook is a slightly different audience but if you write to me you're gonna actually get directly to me and that I think is what we all crave is genuine human connection and understanding and love and patience and kindness and all those things that seem to be in short supply, but honestly are an unlimited fount that you just have to ask for access to. And the access is available to everyone. Let's talk about that, that unlimited fount of goodness and positivity and 
inspiration and all the good things in the world. It's our own mindsets. And let me know if you agree, and I think you will. It's our own mindsets that prevent us, that block us from this infinite bount of wisdom and all things good. I agree. I mean, it's like Marianne Williamson said, we're not afraid of failing. We're afraid that we're powerful beyond measure. And one of the things that I love about meditation is I, I love the chakra system. And so, you know, where you can really focus on different areas of your life. If you need to feel grounded and connected to the earth, you can do that. If you feel like you need some more mojo in your relationship, you can put some energy towards towards your pelvic chakra. You know, if you feel like you are preparing for a big online conference where you're scared to talk, well, focus on opening that throat chakra. I love that you can focus your energy on different parts of your body, which you know, people say, oh, it's hooey, it's this, it's that. Well, I'm sorry, not every single ancient healing modality and religion could have it in common across all of these ancient Chinese and Indian and all of these different cultures without there being something to it in the way that we understand our relationship to the universe around us. And so, call it what you will, you know, call it universe, call it spirit, call it, you know, universal, whatever you call it. I choose to call it God. God is, in my opinion, so much bigger than we ever have even the concept of. And so you can start your day every day by saying, I'm going to feel the sunlight on the top of my head, the light of God coming down, beaming on me. You can also, I do believe that God has a masculine and a feminine side. And so, you know, you're, you're heavenly. There's a reason we say heavenly father and earth mother. And I have been studying a lot because I, I am about to do an Ayurvedic yoga course. And so I've been studying a lot about concepts of how do we interpret the awareness of God and how do how does that manifest itself in plants, in the wind, in the sun, in this? So when you think about a heavenly father and an earthly mother, both of those, in my opinion, are godly energies and we just draw on them. And I think probably you have some people listening that say, oh, I'm so empathetic and people just drain me and people steal my life force. Well, honey child, that's because you're not tapping into God's life force. You're relying on yourself. You're relying on yourself. And so take a moment, take your shoes off, go find some grass outside and realize that there is divine feminine energy that you can draw up from the earth. The other thing I love about earthly divine feminine energy is if you've got crap going on in your life, for lack of a better way to say it, you poop it out, the earth takes it. It takes it to the core of the earth and it burns it up. It burns it up. It transmutes it to where you no longer have to deal with it. And so if you're somebody who struggles with negativity or feeling like you're not enough or i'm in this crappy dead in relationship with this guy who steals all my money and might even hit me every so often you have an opportunity to experience the exact equal and opposite of that you do you for every negative thing that is happening in the world around us and god knows this has been a lesson in what the heck is going on this year but for every bad thing that is happening, there is an equal and opposite good thing that is happening. And that's just, that's not just manifest in spirituality. That's just physics. That is just physics. Absolutely. The scales of the universe will always balance out. And I, for one, choose to believe that love always wins. Kindness always wins. God always wins. You cannot take the light of the universe out of people. It may not be there, but you cannot take it out once it has been ignited. It is always there and it is always there in infinite abundance. You know, 
people keep talking about like, well, somebody's going to get a piece of my pie. You know, how many of you out there are wellness coaches or, uh, or, or, you know, yoga teachers or business strategy coaches. And you go, well, Lindsay may be taking a piece of my pie. Well, Lindsay's just over here baking a bunch of pies and giving them away to as many flipping people as I can. The more pies that I can just bake and give away and be like, hey, where this pie came from, you can also bake 10,000, 100,000, a million and give them away. And again, it's not about the huge gestures. You don't have to buy someone a car. You don't have to be Oprah and you get a car and you get a car. You can smile at somebody at, at, at the corner store, you know, you can tell your pharmacist who you may have never seen before and may never see again, that the fact that they took two minutes to talk to you about your medicine helped to keep you safe, you know? And so the world is not short on kindnesses. Sometimes we are just blind to them. And that's our, that's our job is to see the goodness in the world and to amplify it. That's, that's, that's my Dharma. I'll keep walking that. I am speechless. Like everything that just came out of your mouth. Like I feel like you drew it out of my heart and you're just like, Bleh. there, there <laughs> for you. all the world, for Aww. all the world. I mean, everything just, I firmly believe that God is in everything. It's in me. It's in you. It's in this computer. It's in, it's in my neighbors. So if we all just saw the God, the spirit, the universe within each other, imagine how the world would be like and to just have that thought that we are infinite we are mm -hmm. infinitely filled with with infinite choices with infinite kindness with infinite everything i mean everything people you know i usually this is my tagline i usually tell people to rewind or to hit that button back you know a few spaces listen to this as soon as we're done listen to this whole thing again i promise you it'll change your life change your life how how can people find you if they want more of this energy more of this air more of this kindness more of this up leveling of spirit oh well you can head over to lindsayelmore.com you can follow me on instagram and facebook at lindsay elmore l-i-n-d-s-e-y and i am also on pinterest at dr lindsay elmore that's just dr dr lindsay elmore I hope you don't mind and everybody you need to check that out. But I, we talked about meditation at the beginning of this. Let's, yeah. can we run? And if you need to go, that's fine to my listeners, but to those who are not driving, if you're at home or if you're driving and you can listen to this, maybe we'll make this for drivers as well. Can you lead my listeners through a five minute meditation? Sure. Something that they can take with them Aww. into their life. I would and love to. Thank you so much. And I will join. Okay, here we go. So if you're seated in a chair, just place both of your feet flat on the floor. If you're seated on the ground, become aware of your two sitting bones sitting squarely on the floor. And become aware maybe of your thighs, your ankles, your knees that are touching the floor. If you are seated in your chair, you can also become aware of those sitting bones on your, on your chair and your feet flat on the floor. And go ahead and just take a moment, just shrug your ears and just scrunch, scrunch, scrunch your face and shrug your ears up, shrug your shoulders up to your ears and make tight, tight fists and maybe even clench your butt cheeks and, and clench, 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 clench. <sighs> and then just let it all go. Allow this new sense of relaxation to come over you deeply. Sit relaxed, but with a nice straight spine, allowing the energies to roll up and down your spine with grace and with ease. And now gently allow your eyes to close. For just a moment, connect to your breath. Notice the flow of the breath going in and out of your nostrils, perhaps the gentle wave-like pattern of your belly. In today's practice, we will be cultivating loving kindness. We all have love, we all have kindness within us. 
we have the natural capacity for loving kindness that is unconditional, that is open, that is gentle, and that is supportive. Loving kindness is a natural opening for our compassionate heart that we share with ourselves as well as others. I'd like for you to take a moment and envision yourself seated in your chair or on the ground. And I want you to send out from the very core of your heart, loving kindness, gentleness, ease directed towards yourself. With yourself in mind, say to yourself, may I be feel filled with loving kindness. May I be held in loving kindness. May I be connected and calm. May I accept myself just as I am. May I be happy. May I know the joy of being alive. Think now about someone that you love very dearly, a beloved parent or a spouse or a child, perhaps even a friend. Focus on them, their, their image in your mind's eye and offer them this simple prayer. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love for you right now. May you accept yourself just as you are. May you be happy. May you know the joy of being alive. Now I'd like for you to think of someone who's a little bit neutral, a neighbor, a grocery store clerk, someone that you know, but you know, you might not have even really looked at that bank teller, but you see them in your mind's eye and you again offer the prayer. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love now. May you accept yourself just as you are. May you be happy and may you know the natural joy of being alive. And now I'd love for you to dig deep. And if it's possible for you, bring to mind someone with whom you've had a very difficult relationship. Someone that you may have even uttered the words, I hate this person, someone that you do not feel sympathy for, you feel no compassion for, you resent this person, you dislike this person. Reminding yourself as you envision this person who you do not like, remind yourself that this person is a whole being who also deserves love and kindness. And that their behaviors that make them dislike, make you dislike them so much, may have stemmed from a lack of loving kindness. If it is possible for you, we offer the prayer one final time towards the person that you do not like. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love now. May you accept yourself just as you are. May you be happy. May you know the joy of being alive. And as we end our meditation today, take any final wiggles that you might need and bring into mind the entire universe, the cosmo, this that we all live in. And may we all be filled with loving kindness. Gently open your eyes. That was amazing, Lindsay. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Oh, it's such an honor to get to talk to you today. You know, from the first moment I saw you, I said, I, I want to get to know her 
more just the spirit just exudes out of you and it's a beautiful thing to witness thank you so much Lindsay. and trust me you're gonna hear more from me we are best friends now oh girl <laughs> best friends for life and you know if you need any if you ever need me just even if you just need some loving kindness i'm always here thank you so much and thank you to everyone who is listening today you are amazing. I hope you got so much from this, so much value. And please look up Lindsay, get on Instagram, message her, let her know how she can help you. Bye now. Join us for your second cup of coffee every Monday through Friday at noon. Live every day brings us our best content we've done so far. Super excited, super engaging, bunch of great guests. We're here to answer your questions and we so appreciate you listening. Make sure to check this out. Can't wait to see you.